Thus far in our discussion on enzymes, we kept our discussion very general. We generalized the idea of what enzymes actually do. So we said that enzymes are these biological catalysts that speed up the rates of all different types of reactions that take place inside our cells. And we said that the way that they achieve this is by basically binding that substrate molecule into a special environment we call the active site. And inside the active side, there's a conformational change that takes place and that stabilizes not only the substrate molecule, but it also stabilizes the transition state in that particular reaction. And by stabilizing the transition state, that releases a certain amount of binding energy into the environment and that decreases the energy of that transition state. It lowers the energy of the transition state and that's what lowers the activation energy. And by lowering the activation energy, we speed up the rate of that particular reaction. So this is the general mechanism by which enzymes actually function. Now, we know the general idea of what, of what enzymes actually do, but what exactly happens inside the active sites of these enzymes? So we have all these different types of enzymes found inside our body. They all carry out the same general idea. They basically decrease the activation energy of the reaction, but how exactly is that achieved? And what are some mechanisms, what are some methods that enzymes use to achieve this decrease in activation energy? So four of these methods are listed in the board and we have many more, but these are the four most important ones. And enzymes can use one of these methods or they can use a variety of these different methods. So let's begin by focusing on the first one we call covalent catalysis. So in some enzymes, such as for example, trypsin, chymotrypsin, other digestive enzymes, as well as the enzyme we're going to focus in this lecture, glycopeptide transpeptidase, in some enzymes inside the active site, we have catalytic residues. These amino acids part of the active site of the enzyme that are responsible for actually forming a temporary covalent bond. Now, why would we want to form a covalent bond? Well, one reason is to basically keep that substrate molecule in place inside the active site. So many enzymes contain active sites with catalytic residues that can form temporary covalent bonds with the substrate molecule. And that can be used to basically keep that molecule in place for the time being until that reaction actually takes place. Now, at the end of the reaction, because we always have to regenerate our enzyme, the enzyme is never used or depleted or changed in any reaction, we have to break that bond. And that's exactly why we call this bond a temporary or a transient covalent bond. Now, in our discussion on irreversible suicide inhibitors, we discussed penicillin. And we said that penicillin is an antibiotic that affects a specific bacterial enzyme found in bacterial cells known as glycopeptide transpeptidase. And when we discussed this molecule, we said that inside the active site of glycopeptide transpeptidase is this catalytic residue, namely this serine molecule. And the serine amino acid basically plays the catalytic role of actually forming a covalent, a temporary covalent bond between the oxygen and this carbon. So in this reaction, in the first step, this molecule actually forms a bond between the oxygen and this carbon kicking off this terminal amino acid to form the following temporary transient acyl intermediate molecule. Now, at the end of the reaction, of course, this bond is actually broken. But we form the bond to basically keep this group attached into the active site so that another substrate can move in and grab this group. So the bacterial enzyme glycopeptide transpeptidase utilizes covalent catalysis. 
and as we'll see in just a moment, another enzyme that we could basically uh, we can basically uh, label as using covalent catalysis is chymotrypsin, and this is an important digestive enzyme that exists inside our digestive system. And we'll discuss much in much more detail what chymotrypsin actually does inside the active site. Now. Let's move on to method number two, catalysis by proximity and catalysis by orientation. So if we recall the collision theory from basic chemistry, based on the collision theory, for a reaction to actually take place, what must happen? Well, first of all, those two substrate molecules that are about to react must actually collide. So they must collide, they must collide with enough energy, and they must collide with the proper orientation. So only when the collision actually takes place with the proper orientation and with the right amount of energy do we actually form the product molecule. Now, what the active side does, what enzymes actually do is, they bring the substrate molecules into this very small region of space that creates a microenvironment for that reaction. So inside the active side, we create a microenvironment that not only brings those substrate molecules in close proximity, but it also orients those substrate molecules in the proper orientation so that reaction can actually take place. For instance, if we go back to covalent catalysis, another reason why covalent catalysis might, uh, might take place is because once we attach this group onto the active side that orients that group in just the proper orientation for the next step in the reaction to actually take place. So many biological reactions involve two or more substrate molecules and this implies that for a reaction to actually take place, they must be close enough and must also have the proper orientation. And what active sites of enzymes provide is they provide that small region of space, that microenvironment that brings the substrate close enough for the collisions to actually take place at a high enough frequency. In addition, the active sites may also orient the molecules in the proper orientation for that bond to actually form and for us to form those products. Now, method number three is called acid-based catalysis. And in acid-based catalysis, we basically have a transfer of an H ion. Now, there are many residues that are involved or there are specific residues found in active sites that might be involved in the transfer of an H ion. And one specific residue is the histidine amino acid. So the histidine molecule has a pH that is relatively close to the normal physiological pH. And many enzymes inside our body, as we'll see in the next several lectures, utilize histidine to actually transfer H ion. So active sites may contain residues such as histidine that can participate in transferring hydrogen ions. Now, why would we want to transfer an H ion? Well, in some cases, if we transfer an H ion from one molecule to another molecule, we basically create a strong nucleophile and that strong nucleophile might be needed in that particular biological reaction. So by transferring a hydrogen ion, the active site may activate a nucleophile that is required in that catalysis process. Now, by transferring an H ion, we can also actually stabilize different types of groups that might be found inside the active site that contain charges. And the transfer of H ions can also be used to increase the electrostatic interactions that take place within that active site and that can enter and stabilize things like the transition state inside that chemical reaction. Now, one particular example of an enzyme that uses acid-based catalysis is chymotrypsin. Inside chymotrypsin, inside the active site, we have a serine residue that acts as a nucleophile, but to create a strong nucleophile, what must happen is the H, uh, the H atom, the H ion from the oxygen of serine must be taken away. 
And so what happens is a nearby histidine in the active side participates in actually taking away that H atom. And so we see that the H atom is transferred onto this nitrogen and the positive charge is now essentially delocalized among these different atoms in the histidine side chain. But this one now contains a full negative charge and now this became a very strong nucleophile and this can participate in forming a covalent, a temporary covalent bond. So as we'll see in the next several lectures, chymotrypsin, which this basically describes, uses not only acid-base catalysis, but it also uses covalent catalysis in decreasing the activation energy of that particular chemical reaction. That is, what it participates in is breaking different types of peptide bonds, breaking different types of proteins that we ingest into our body. And finally, the final mechanism by which our enzymes can decrease the activation energy and therefore increase the rates of reactions is called metal ion catalysis. So what's so special about metal ions or metal atoms? Well, many enzymes and many proteins inside our body, for example, when we spoke about myoglobin and hemoglobin, we saw that these proteins use metal atoms. And in fact, enzymes utilize metal atoms as cofactors. Now, what's so special about these metal, uh, metal atoms? Well, metal atoms have the ability to lose electrons very easily. And by losing electrons, they gain a positive charge. So because they are deficient in electrons, they have a positive charge. And this positive charge can be used to interact with different types of molecules found inside the active side. And so the positive charges on metal ions, as we'll see in more detail in the future lectures, they can be used to basically stabilize the trans transition states as well as the intermediate molecules that are formed within that active site. They can also be used to assist in actually forming a strong nucleophile. For instance, one will discuss uh, carbonic anhydrase, we'll see that in carbonic anhydrase inside the active site, we have a zinc metal atom that is used to actually form a strong nucleophile, the hydroxide nucleophile. And finally, this metal atom can actually be used to hold that substrate molecule in place. So in the same way that we can use covalent catalysis to basically orient that substrate and hold it in place, we can also use the positive charge of these metal atoms to actually bring the substrate molecules in the proper orientation and hold them in place inside the active side so that reaction can actually take place at a reasonably high rate. So we see that our enzymes inside our body use a variety of different types of methods and mechanisms to basically carry out the general reaction of decreasing the activation energy of that biological process. So we can have covalent catalysis, we can have catalysis by proximity, we can have acid-base catalysis, and we can also have metal ion catalysis. And we'll discuss many examples of enzymes that utilize these different methods in the next several lectures.